If you only know Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins from his news conferences or social media, you don't have the full picture. Even Jenkins' fellow liberal on the court, John Wiley Price, publicly questions the judge's behaviors and motives. John Wiley Price, by the way, is arguably the most attention-seeking politician in Dallas. He certainly had the most corruption charges and arrests lobbed at him. So if Price is questioning Jenkins' behavior, you know it has to be bad. And it is. Here's Jenkins kicking out fellow commissioner J.J. Koch for not following the judge's own mask orders. The judge is attempting to supersede the governor of Texas because, you know, the judge is a fascist. With the onset of the pandemic, and since the county court is in charge of Dallas's Department of Health and Human Services, Judge Clay Jenkins took charge of the coronavirus response. He's regularly issued orders and made solo decisions in cases that really should have gone to vote. The four other commissioners have expressed a lot of frustration with Jenkins' self-aggrandizing power grabs and have voted multiple times to rein in his actions and restrict his authority. His fellow court members are tired of him overreaching, abusing his power, and playing politics during COVID-19. It was Judge Jenkins who put in place the mask orders and shelter-in-place requirements and the safety mandates that killed an estimated 3,200 small businesses in the Dallas area. Despite his own orders against public gatherings, Jenkins praised the Black Lives Matter and the NGAN group protests that decimated the downtown area during the pandemic. He announced that the county jail would not process demonstrators who were arrested, no matter how violent they were. And it didn't look great when, as voters across Dallas County struggled financially and emotionally during the lockdowns, Judge Jenkins posted pictures of himself preening by a new Tesla. Jenkins also brazenly engages in cronyism. In early 2021, Jenkins issued private invitations for COVID vaccines, even though supplies were scarce and the general public was told they needed to make appointments in order to receive the vaccine. But Jenkins told certain political allies and friends they could just show up without an appointment and skip the lines to receive their vaccines. Among those reported to have received these private invites, Miguel Solis and Texas Congresswoman Retta Bowers. Jenkins backed Solis in a failed bid for Dallas mayor, and court members have indicated Jenkins plans to run for governor and support Solis as the next county judge. Another example of Jenkins' rampant favoritism, when Dallas County received federal funds for COVID recovery, Judge Jenkins sought to appoint his political allies to the $80,000 board positions. Again, Solis got the preferential treatment, along with Jenkins' former campaign manager, Philip High, and Patricia Nava. These friends of Clay were given the lucrative positions ahead of a confirmation vote by the entire court. And when the court blocked those appointments, the Jenkins cronies still had the nerve to submit invoices for work they'd supposedly done for the committee ahead of any legitimate appointments. Jenkins' quest for money and power extends into his other career as well. He's also a personal injury attorney. When well-known Dallas lawyer Brian Loncar tragically died in 2016, Jenkins was the executor of the estate, and he took full advantage of that role. He undermined Loncar's wishes, betrayed the widow and surviving family, and launched a hostile takeover of Loncar's law firm. If you look at the Loncar firm's website now, you'll see Jenkins' bio prominently displayed, and you can see the credit he gives himself for his handling of the Dallas Ebola scare of 2014. Not all Dallasites would agree he managed the Ebola situation very well. There were complaints registered when the family that was exposed to Ebola and was supposed to be quarantined were allowed to roam free, wandering outside their assigned dwelling and exposing unsuspecting residents to the deadly disease. And the home where the at-risk group was told to isolate Apparently, none of the neighbors were notified that an Ebola quarantine was taking place nearby. Several lawsuits have been filed as a result of Dallas's Ebola scare. And whether it's Ebola or coronavirus, the judge clearly revels in the attention, holding the majority of press conferences himself rather than allowing DCHHS or other health officials to provide the lion's share of updates. Other court members have complained that the head of Health and Human Services, Dr. Philip Wong, seems to report directly to Judge Jenkins when he is, in fact, supposed to work with the entire court. So, to sum it up, Judge Clay Jenkins boldly usurps law firms from grieving families, makes health crises about himself, misuses his power to the point of multiple censures from his fellow court members, 
He selectively enforces his own measures to suit his personal political agenda, shows blatant favoritism to political allies, and doubles down on mandates that haven't shown meaningful improvement during the pandemic. It's almost beautiful to watch the county commissioner slap Jenkins' hand again and again during this time of deep political divide, Democrat and Republican commissioners on the court are uniting to repeatedly vote down and restrict Judge Clay Jenkins, rebuke his actions, denounce his cronyism, and counteract his governmental overreaches.